friends, it's Rob Goff, CFSP, the Executive Director for Washington State Funeral Directors Association. We're going to have a brand new episode of Funeral Literacy. This is our second episode that we're doing, and we're doing it from a cemetery. It will be kind of loud in different parts of this cemetery, because as you can see, we are right next door to I-5. It's right there in the background. We're up in Everett, Washington at Evergreen Cemetery, and we want to talk to you about funeral arts funerary arts in cemeteries. We want to look at the different ways that people memorialize their loved ones, give you some ideas, give you some thoughts, and uh, just enjoy the time out here in the cemetery. So sit back and relax as we have a, our brand new episode of Funeral Literacy by Member Talks. One thing that you always want to do when you come to any cemetery is pay attention and look for the signs in the cemetery. There are different rules that you must follow in the cemetery. These rules are uh, for your protection as well as the beautification of the cemetery. So stop check out the rules They're all kind of the same. You want to really pay close attention to if there's a time period on The reader board that discusses when the park closes when the cemetery closes Make sure you know when the cemetery closes. You don't want to get trapped inside especially if there's gates So check it out look for the rules uh, you'll also find garbage cans. Sometimes you even find porta potties or, or bathrooms around the cemetery. Make sure that you uh, just keep every keep your trash put in the right spots. Keep the cemetery nice. It's here for everybody's enjoyment. It's here for everybody to come and memorialize and make sure that uh, you pack it in, you pack it out, so to speak. So uh, we'll talk to you. We are up here on the section called Mountain View Estates. It's a mausoleum and family estate section. And there is all sorts of different ways to memorialize loved ones up here. This is absolutely beautiful. Uh, these are samples of upright monuments that can hold cremated remains. This large thing here is called a lawn crypt. And it's designed to hold caskets uh, in, in it. We also have a beautiful walking path. Here's another one of those samples of those... Uh, upright monuments. It's a family monument that holds family members that have been cremated in, and they're placed inside. Little lawn pediments where people can place their uh, loved ones into the cremated remains. This is a giant rock that has core holes drilled into it and the core holes can be replaced uh, and names placed on top to show who's inside those core holes. Behind this we see an actual mausoleum crypt. These are buildings, mausoleum buildings, uh, designed to hold caskets. And inside of those are caskets. Some of the new uprights, the bird baths and the different things that you can do. This is really, really neat with the inscription of the car uh, inscribed on top. How fun is that? We've got family estates. Here's another example of a bird, bird bath feeder, but it has the actual bird on the top, all solid granite, and inside holds the cremated remains. So we're still at the same mausoleum, but I wanted to stop and look at this. This is a bench, it's a memory bench, and inside the pedestal, underneath the hands, is where you can hold cremated remains, then you can have the bench that's right there that can be inscribed. Once again, there's the back, the front side of that uh, family mausoleum. Uh, there is all sorts of neat stuff just in this little section of this cemetery, and this is just a small small part of the cemetery. We're going to walk around on this side and take a look well. So these ones that are blank may be sold already, may be still available, but um, if they are available, they're wonderful things to memorialize loved ones. Here's the back side to that family mausoleum. This is a public mausoleum here based off the size of these shutter fronts and the names this looks like it holds companion urns on this side so you can have your urns placed and then the bigger larger fronts are for caskets 
and the fact that there's two names on here tells me that there could be two family members in the same casket. We're back again. I wanted to show you. I kept calling them a bird bath, and this is the reason why. They, when they first came out, these pedestals, they were designed as an actual bird bath, and as technology got better and uh, the artistry got better, they were able to make different carapaces for the top, and a carapace means the top. So this top piece where the flower is and has the water collection for the birds, uh, that's called the carapace, and they've come up with new ones since then. But I, I still kind of get stuck finding myself calling them bird baths every once in a while. Here's another sample of that large family estate right. So while I was out, I happened to run into the manager of the funeral home. He's a friend of mine. He was up here checking some locations, but he was telling me that they just opened up and just finished building this new walkway, and we wanted to stop and take a look at it. Now, where we're at is on the opposite side of where we just were. Uh, you can see this is the uh, mausoleum building here. But look at down here, these are all brand new. They just got put in, just got built. These are all pediments that can be engraved uh, with people's names for loved ones that are buried. Uh, their urns can be buried here. And over here we've got benches as well, more benches. Now this here, let's take a look, let's scan back. This here is a public columbarium wall and each one of those little squares is what's called a niche, or some people refer to them as niche, but it, I, I call it a niche, uh, usually big enough for two urns uh, per square. So if you look at just the top one, there's enough space there for eight people. Now a family can buy a whole section of that and have eight urns in that whole upper section, or they can buy just an individual one and have up to two urns in that corner one. But this is a, uh, we stand back a little bit, this is a nice, it's called a drop ship niche wall or columbarium. Now over here, we're going to come around and we're going to look at some of these. These are going to be family estates for niches. So for example here, this as well can hold um, up to eight urns and you can have any Part of that granite engraved with the family name maybe at the top uh, and then the individual names in those niches and then of course the beautiful flower vase in the middle here's a smaller version that will hold up to four urns and then again a bench these benches are really neat because they actually can be core hole drilled in the base of them and you can have a uh, urns placed into the base on the niches now you're going to notice over here and we'll look at a couple more there. But look at this, these little sections right here. These are mini family estate sections. Families can buy these and have family members have their urns buried. And of course, they're separated by the shrubbery. And you can have a main headstone, possibly additional smaller headstones representing multiple urns. But they've got these little family estates kind of set up all around this island here. What a neat idea. These things that you're looking at right here, these little metal things, these are divider plates. That's what tells, the, that's what they use for the mapping system at the cemetery. So there's codes that are on those dividers and those codes uh, will delineate where the different sections are. Now take a look at where we're at up here. I don't know if you can see that in the back. There's I-5, we talked about that. Just below this hill right over here is the funeral home. But let's take a look from up here. This is the cemetery that we're at. And we're gonna get into this cemetery a little bit and take a look at it. We're gonna take a look at some individual stones. I've been here before and this is a beautiful cemetery. They keep it very well manicured and it has some of the neatest stones uh, that you've seen before. And we'll show you some of those. And we'll also get over eventually and look at one of the biggest headstones I personally have ever seen, and it's called Rucker's Tomb. Here's one of our crew members driving around, checking things out. So um, let's go see some more of the cemetery. Uh, that I would suggest, if you can do it, is when you come to a cemetery, if they have an office, 
uh, or some sort of wall maybe that has a map find a way to get a, a picture of the map of the cemetery take a look at the map because it has all sorts of information uh, you can see that on this map it talks about uh, the different sections now this section is on the map is called 77 LC LC stands for lawn crypt and you can see that in the sign right here companion lawn crypts and what a companion lawn crypt is these are burial spaces that are deep enough for people to be buried together so what we're looking at here are individual headstones for two people as we have two people buried together usually family members uh, buried together either in a single crypt that is double depth or potentially in a crypt that uh, stacks on top of each other uh, this is a nice display of uh, some of the granite work that you can see here with the angel once again we've got those markers uh, throughout the grave so that b10 uh, i'm not sure how their mapping system works but my guess is if you look and you ask about the companion lawn crypt for lawn 77 b10 you'll be able to find that on a map and it'll take you right straight to uh, this section of the cemetery Okay, so we're in another section of the cemetery. This is a fun one because this has a lot of great upright monuments. Here's a bench that a family has purchased. A uh, nice, beautifully engraved bench. Um, you can see that there's all sorts of things. Now this is, we're in the back section of this cemetery and it's really loud because this is a working cemetery. Uh, again, back here we have all the people from uh, the grounds crew out weed eating. We've got people on this side over here. You can hear the truck backing up. These guys are preparing for a grave burial. Uh, we got all sorts of stuff happening. So cemeteries, as peaceful as they are, can be very loud. Uh, and you just have to prepare yourself for that. But let's take a look at some of the other monuments that are out here in this section. Uh, this is kind of neat. We've got some homemade things. We've got some uh, nice cut granite monuments. Here's some flat monuments. Here's another cremation bench out in the middle of the cemetery. Uh, here's what appears to be a homemade monument. Uh, this is kind of neat, definitely different. Uh, these are University of Washington colors. I don't know if he's a member of the University of Washington or not, but that's definitely their colors. It's a neat painted monument. Uh, as you can see here, this must be a young person that uh, loved Batman. And they don't have to be, you don't have to have a beautifully cut stone. You can use a natural stone uh, to have as a memorialization. Uh, these people have made stones, painted stones, and placed on top as reminders. And it shows people that, uh, you know, somebody's come by and visited. Here's one here. Uh, this, this is a, another young person, obviously loved as... I would say metal music, the drums and the guitar, but uh, kind of a neat display, kind of a neat uh, different engraving. Some people might not like it, some people would, but it uh, uh, definitely represents this individual. But let's take a look around and just sort of scan. We're going to walk up and we'll come towards this. Now, the trick to filming in a cemetery, just like the trick to doing anything in a cemetery, watch where you walk. You never know what you're going to trip over. Here's another neat inscribed headstone. Uh, this is the back side of an upright monument uh, that's inscribed there. Here's another one of those natural rocks used for a headstone. These are really pretty neat. You see a lot of these as well in um, natural cemeteries or green cemeteries. So let's go around and see a few others. We've just gone across the street. We haven't gone very far. But um, there's a headstone that's over here that I wanted to get a picture of and show you guys uh, as another example of some great cemetery artistry, uh, some modern cemetery artistry. We'll look at some of the older cemetery artistry soon. But as we're approaching, you can kind of make out this upright monument. On top of this is a car. And I saw this a number of years ago when I was here, and I wanted to come back and get a picture of this and show you guys this headstone. 
this is really cool. This has this guy's car uh, engraved in the granite on top of the headstone itself. Even down to the actual license plate of the car is engraved on there. Really, really a neat design, really a neat way to memorialize Mr. Dalton. Um, he obviously loved his car, and uh, this is a great way to show that and express that. So, great job. Look at the racing stripe down the middle of the hood. How cool is that? What a neat way to, de to uh, display his monument. Now, here's something to consider when choosing your cemetery site. A lot of people love the idea of being near trees, being next to trees. And I'm sure that when the time came that these folks chose these sites, this tree was rather small. Well, like everything, trees grow up, the roots get big, and they distort and move the headstones. And there's really not much you can do about that short of getting rid of the tree. So it is definitely something to consider as well when you look at, this is cleaned up pretty well, but when you look at some of the area underneath the tree, the fall zone, if you will, uh, you can get some, some issues. This is a neat old headstone. This is a veteran's headstone from the Spanish-American War. Uh, there's a lot of those here, as this is an older part of the cemetery. This is an old section of the cemetery. Those pediments that we saw over by the mausoleum these are samples of where the ideas came from. These, these are called pillow monuments because they kind of resemble the shape of a pillow. If you lay down, they kind of resemble the shape of a pillow. Now the neat thing about granite is it does come in multiple different colors. We've got the, the darker reds, the lighter reds you can see. This is all sorts of a neat color with actually a really neat inscription on it. Um, I'm not sure what particular name that granite is, but all of your granite manufacturers or all of your granite companies, I should say, will be able to tell you. This is a neat upright monument that has a, a matching flat monument with it with a floral vase in between of matching granite. Bronze. We saw the bronze earlier on flat. Here's a bronze attached to a upright. So you can have bronze plates attached to upright monuments as well. This one caught my eye, this big one here. Let's walk over and take a look at it. This is a big red granite. That's all solid granite pieces monument and it looks like it has the opening in the front for urns. You can place urns in that space in the middle there. Kind of a neat large monument. I'd say it's probably about six, seven feet high, a uh, pretty de decent sized monument. So once again, we're looking at some older section of the cemetery. Uh, throughout here, you can see the old, old monuments. This leads to a maintenance road, it says no trespassing. You know, that's another thing. If you're in a cemetery uh, and it says no trespassing, don't trespass. There's a reason they don't want you down there. Could be a maintenance issue, could be uh, all sorts of things. But follow the rules, follow the signs. It's hard to tell on this video right here, but this is such a neat cemetery. This has some old growth cedar that's up in there. Uh, this cedar tree that, you're, that I'm showing you back up in there, I'm gonna walk next to it, see if I can get a picture uh, that compares how big around that is. I can tell you that uh, it is absolutely enormous. It's an enormous trunk on this tree. Um, there's a lot of these throughout here uh, that have been here for thousands of years. So let's go see if we can see. So this is gonna be hard to do, being I'm the only one out here doing this. But hopefully this will give you some idea of the enormity of some of the trees that are out here. This particular tree right here is an old growth cedar uh, tree. That trunk right there, I cannot reach my arms around and grab 
This one here, different type of tree, old growth nonetheless, even bigger trunk. All of these trees that you're seeing here, I cannot wrap my arms around. This one's just a unique tree that's split and done all sorts of different things. But let's take a look, let's do a full circle, and we're gonna walk up to the tree that we showed you from the distance of how big this thing is. This trunk here is probably at least eight feet from on the base, at least eight feet from point to point, if not bigger. And it's just an enormous, an enormous tree that has stood the test of time for how many thousands of years. But I happened to notice when I got up here that there's even a bigger tree and that's this one over here. And so we're gonna walk over to it. And on the way, we'll take a look at some of these headstones. Here's a neat, what they used to call a broken column. It's actually a sheared column. They cut it down. Some neat old uh, carapaces once again. Take a look at this tree that they're sitting in the shadow of. The base of this tree is at minimum 15 feet across where it hits the ground, where the trunk touches the ground. It is just huge. And when you look at this tree and you look up it, it's hard to tell, but the branches that are coming off, the main branches, are yet so big around. For example, this one right here, this first one that you come to, I don't know if you can see that or not, that first one right there, I would barely be able to wrap my arms around it. It's so big. The base of this tree is just enormous. It's absolutely huge. It's amazing that it's sitting here. And it's had some issues with some stones, but it hasn't had a lot. It hasn't had a lot of issues, which tell me that the, brand, the roots are growing down deeper than the surface roots that we saw in some of the other ones that caused the stones to move in each direction. But this is just such a peaceful little hillside in the middle of the cemetery. And there's a lot of these hillsides. Um, just a little peaceful one. And we'll end this section by looking over here. Here's a veteran's headstone. And this is a veteran, it says of World War I, private in the infantry, looks like the 8th Division, World War I. The individual was born 1887 and died in 1951. And we want to thank all of our veterans and all of our active service members for their service, for their sacrifice. We thank you all. So one of the neat things about this particular cemetery, and a lot of cemeteries, is they have these obelisks that stick up. Obelisks were um, very popular for years, uh, around the 20s, uh, the 10s and teens and 20s, uh, as monuments to have an obelisk. And the reason for that was they represented pointing to heaven. Uh, but you can see there's different types there's one kind of back in the background that has a ball on the top of it. Kind of the same thing back there. Um, another form of the obelisk. And there's lots of them around. Uh, you'll see them. They represent, like I say, pointing to heaven. I wanted to come to this cemetery while we were in this area for a number of reasons. First, we're going to walk through and we're going to see some of these older, older monuments. Uh, most of these are very small. These usually represent children's monuments um, from children that passed away. And you can tell by the, by the looks of some of these uh, that they are very old. Uh, this particular child passed away at the age of two back in 1905. One of the things that is a very big indicator of a child's grave is when you see a lamb engraved on top of the gravestone itself. Uh, that's a uh, it's pretty common. You'll see that on many children's graves or angels um, to represent peace. 
and um, there's you'll see that on a lot of it but this is actually this section that we're in right now is a section that was dedicated uh, to infants and um, 1905 uh, you'll notice a lot of these are from the 1905 era. And in 1905 was the time period that the uh, Spanish flu came through Everett. And the Spanish flu uh, uh, claimed many, many lives, including children. And uh, so a lot of what we're seeing right here are children uh, that passed away from the Spanish flu uh, of 1905. 1906 but here's a couple more with the with the lambs uh, that are here um, some of these have little indicators of where the actual grave was these were put into place to separate the graves from one another uh, they were also put into place so families could uh, use them as flower pots if you will they could put flowers in there of course um, I would say this family uh, is probably long since passed and is buried somewhere possibly here at this cemetery um, possibly at another cemetery but, the, but judging by the age of these graves I don't know that they probably get many visitors nowadays because of the length that these individuals have been deceased but you can see as we look and pan around these are all very very small headstones and they're typically going to be headstones when they're this size or with those lambs of infants. Another uh, indicator that I can see down here that we're going to look at is the empty chair. This should be an empty chair. Possibly it's a dove. It's hard to tell from this angle. Let's walk over here and take a look. It's a dove. So we see that as well as another indicator of a child's grave. The dove, yet another sample of, or example, excuse me, of uh, representing peace. Um, that's another indicator that that would be a child's grave that you can see from a distance. Now you can obviously do the math if you can read the dates there and re and see that this individual child was only three years old when they passed. Um, back off in the distance, you'll notice a few more of the obelisks that have uh, come into play. Uh, there's one there and one there. Again, obelisks can be fairly small. These two that we're looking at are really three or four feet tall, maybe about three feet tall, um, but uh, they can be enormous. Now, another reason that we came to Evergreen Cemetery here in Everett to record this uh, was because of something that is extremely tall something that is extremely large, something that we want to introduce you to. Um, back in this back corner, it looks really dark, kind of gray back here. It's because there's a lot of old growth trees and not a lot of sunlight that gets back here. There's a lot of rain uh, that lands, of course, in the Seattle, greater Seattle area, and that's where we're at. So you see a lot of the moss that grows on the stones because of the because of the rain and because of the lack of sun um, that gets back here due to the trees. But we wanted to come here and talk to you and show you something that is absolutely beautiful. It's called Rucker's Tomb. And here is Rucker's Tomb. Rucker's Tomb is in a ginormous pyramid. This thing is absolutely huge. I'd say it's probably yeah, 50 feet tall at least. I know that this first base, first platform, is right around six feet tall. Um, that goes around the base, and so you've got at least six or seven feet there, plus each one of those steps going up is about another two to three feet. So that is a very, very large, family mausoleum. We'll take a walk around it and take a look at it. Um, the tree that you're seeing that's on top of it, the tree itself is 15 feet tall, minimum. Uh, the tree itself is 15 feet. But this is Rucker's Tomb. It's known as Rucker's Tomb, and I don't know a lot of the history about Rucker's Tomb, uh, but I, I have heard that Mr. Rucker was one of the 
founding fathers of the town of Everett. And when he died, he dedicated this property um, to the cemetery or to be used as a cemetery so that he could have his tomb placed on it. And this is it right here, Mr. Rucker and Rucker's tomb. And we'll go up and take a better, closer look at it as well. Okay, let's see if we can make our way up the steps of Rucker's tomb and go see the front of it and get an idea. Now, before we go up the steps, here's an idea of how tall this is. That space right there, that first level, is approximately two feet. And each one of those going up is approximately two feet. This is on the, this is from the base of the platform. Give you an idea, there was the tree that we saw that we said is about 15 feet tall. This is the base of the platform. So I just took a minute to count. It appears that there is about 16 steps up to the very point of Rucker's tomb, each one being approximately about two feet. So from the base, we're about 30 feet into the air. And my guess is that there's people that come and climb up there. I wouldn't, but uh, that's what they say. So let's, I don't know, this is hard to read. It says, Father Wyatt Rucker died May 27, 19, excuse me, 1878. Mother Jane Morris Rucker died November 10, 1907. The pioneer of Everett, the true wife, the perfect mother, the soul of honor. So we presume that Wyatt and Jane Rucker are both entombed inside of this large, large tomb. I'm going to walk around and take a look. Notice that these are solid granite pieces. That's a belt buckle. Why there's a belt buckle, I have no idea. That doesn't represent anything that I'm aware of. But these are solid granite pieces built on top of each other. Right at the edge, that's about a six foot drop off right there. And this goes straight up to the top of Rucker's tomb. And you can walk around, completely around this platform You'll notice that there are no grave spaces in the near proximity. My assumption is, is the Rucker family probably owns most, if not all, of this section of land. Excuse me, of land, and um, that's why there's no neighbors around. One of the neat things that I can tell by looking at this. Is there's not a lot of vandalism. There's not a lot of vandalism, which is really a great thing to say because cemeteries seem to be easy targets for vandalism. This is the, what would be the uh, southwest corner of Rucker's tomb from the platform. It has a spot for a tree, but there's no tree that's here. And then there's the original tree that we saw. But again, take a look from up here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful view filled with old growth trees. And a beautiful tomb. These little squares up here in the middle, these are uh, breather vents. And uh, looks like they've had some sort of putty or something put over them at one point or another, but something's either vandals or possibly birds have created the holes to uh, open that back up. But that looks like it has some sort of epoxy or a putty that's in there, and the birds have pecked away at it. Such a neat, neat mausoleum. One that uh, very unique to this. Now, 
right over here in the shadow, we'll take a look at this one. This is another private family mausoleum. Uh, right off the edge, here's that tree again. Right off the edge of the mausole of Rucker's tomb is this family mausoleum. That's the back side of it, and we'll take a look at that here in just a second. This is a very neat old stone that fell, appears to be years ago, and it must have fallen a couple times. Eventually the cemetery crew or somebody just set it next to the grave. As opposed to trying to continue to fix it, you can see how the broken piece still on the upright there matches the piece that's busted on the corner here. Looking back uh, as we go through, you notice that some of these terrace, they've, the families have put in staircases. Uh, what a great way to be able to access your loved ones, to be able to get to their graves. Uh, I'm telling you, these terraces are super steep, super steep terrace. So these staircases were a great idea, a great way to do this. Um, here's a sample. Take a look at this. This is a sample that uh, somebody tried to clean the stone and um, possibly used some uh, cleaning material. Uh, it did make everything stand out more. However, uh, look at the damage that it did to the stone itself. It does make it legible. Uh, compared to the stone next door uh, but when you scrub on these old stones there's definitely a way to do it so that the stone doesn't end up looking like that uh, although it is legible it still looks very bad take a look at some of these you can see the gravity um, and these have f been fallen over for quite some time uh, just because of the gravity and the nature of, of how heavy these stones are. This one's been uh, tipped over for long enough that the moss has actually grown over the base. The one behind it there uh, is tipping over as well, or has tipped over. Uh, you can see that through a couple of these. I don't know if it's going to be easy to tell with this, but the, uh, to, the, to the left there, that square granite piece, stands about two and a half feet tall so if you t go off the corner of that you can see how large these terrace level these terraced levels are uh, they're just super steep in this section very difficult uh, there's Everett off in the background downtown Everett um, so it's just a beautiful view beautiful cemetery I highly recommend if you are in this area stop by and see this neat old cemetery uh, here in Everett, Washington. Take a look at this tree. They've got all sorts of different things, different kinds of trees, but just beautiful, beautiful uh, scenery, beautiful trees, beautiful old growth. Uh, it's just wonderful to be out here. Come check it out. Evergreen Cemetery, Everett, Washington. Well, we hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this episode of Funeral Literacy by the Washington State Funeral Directors Association. It's been a real pleasure to spend some time uh, out at the Evergreen Cemetery in Everett, Washington. Highly recommend if you're up in this area, stop and take a look at it. Uh, behind me you can see Rucker's Tomb uh, and a lot of great, great samples of funeral arts, funeral, funeral artistry, I guess is a better way to say it, funeral artistry. Uh, so come on by, check it out. Stop at the office, get a map, let them know you're here, and uh, they'll welcome you in with open arms here at Evergreen Cemetery in Everett, Washington. Bye.